and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate here in this chapel, not the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, but the Solemnity of St. Albert the Great, by the liturgical privilege granted to those places to celebrate the feast of their solemnity, even if it should fall on a Sunday. That we might celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries, let us begin by acknowledging our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie.
Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Albert great by his joining of human wisdom to divine faith, grant, we pray, that we may so adhere to the truths he taught that through progress and learning we may come to a deeper knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And when you have gray hair, you will find wisdom. As so plowing and sowing, draw close to her, then wait for her bountiful crops. For in cultivating her, you will work but little, and soon you will eat her fruit. She is rough ground to the full, 
the stupid cannot abide her. If you are willing to listen, you can learn. If you pay attention, you can be you can be instructed. Stand in the company of the elders. Stay close to whoever is wise. Be eager to hear every discourse. Let no insightful saying escape you. If you seed in the intelligent, seek them out. Let your feet wear away their doorsteps. Reflect on the law of the Most High, and let His commandments be your constant study. Then He will enlighten your mind and make you wise as you desire. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show his works by a good life in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Wisdom of this kind does not come down from above but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. The word of the Lord.
Angelis Ader tu sile fidelis Qui fecit Quo The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples a parable. It will be as when a man who is going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, The one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the solemnity of St. Albert the Great. We get as the gospel for St. Albert not one of the typical wisdom gospels used for the doctors of the church, and by that I mean a gospel, say, where the wise man builds his house on the rock, not on the sand, but we get the parable of the talents. And in St. Albert's case, it's in fact easy to see why. St. Albert was born around 1200, was master at the University of Paris uh, at the age of about 45, Cologne regent and starting a new school with St. Thomas in tow around 1248, provincial in 1254, back to teaching for a few years and then bishop in 1260, and he remained bishop for the final 20 years of his life. During that time, St. Albert uh, did studies and work as a natural scientist, a natural philosopher, a theologian, a teacher, professor, a bishop, administrator, diplomat, either one or three, depending on how you want to count them. Let's do three. An all-around hard worker, a mystic, and above all, a saint. St. Albert took, if you will, the five talents that God gave him and doubled them. 
Sure, as a preacher, I can have some poetic license and make it work out to 10, which I did. But this bishop, theologian, philosopher, scientist, had a genuine human side as well. It's easy to see the picture of St. Albert. Uh, it would look almost like he's the patron saint of hoarders. The picture of St. Albert in a crowded room with a globe and a snake crawling around at his feet and a falcon on his shoulder, a stack of books on one side and on the other and an open book on his lap. It's easy to see a photo like that and to be intimidated at the stature of an individual who accomplished so much. And yet, as I said, St. Albert had a genuine human side as well. As a child, he had an interest in falcons, and although I don't know the exact details, he went at least twice to behold mar mar marvelous things of which he had heard. And then when he was still uh, in the order uh, and, and uh, of, of still youngish years, he writes the following incident, and these are his own words. He went to a house for dinner, and the servants of the nobleman whose house he was at had caught a fish and opened it up, and there in the belly of the fish was a large oyster shell. So they took it out, and then St. Albert's words take over. The smooth, shiny inside of the oyster shell had the figures of three serpents with their mouths uplifted, so perfectly represented that not even the eyes were missing on the convex uh, eyes were missing on the, on the concave inner side. And on the convex outer side, which was rough, it had the figures of many, ten or more serpents, similarly represented in all details. This shell I kept for a long time, and I showed it to many people. And later I sent it as a gift to someone in Teutonia. So apparently in the Middle Ages, it was not a violation of poverty to keep a really cool oyster shell on your desk. <laughs> but it's, not the, it's, it's the whole episode that shows the humanity of Albert. First of all, to be able to look at a shell and to say, whoa, cool, look, there's three snakes, and you can even see their eyes. And then to think that it's so cool that you keep it. And then to think that it's so cool that you want to show it to other people. And finally, to realize that you can do something good by sending it off as a gift. That, my brothers, is a human being. <laughs> Both before and in the order, he would travel to places where some marvelous natural phenomenon was reported. Other times, he would simply note down the reports of the event. But St. Albert's writings on natural philosophy, and especially his careful notes, he took of ordinary and marvelous things, this was not a side hobby, but it was an act of charity. As with Thomas Aquinas, Albert's Dominican brothers pleaded with him to write commentaries on the works of Aristotle. Recognizing his gifts, they asked him to explain to them the marvels of the natural world, and Albert did so, supplementing his commentaries on Aristotle with his own philosophical theological comments and with the reports of his own experiments, personal observations, and the reliable reports of others. St. Albert paid careful attention to detail. He noted, for example, that copper or copper vessels would add a, add a metallic flavor to food, especially foods that were slightly acidic. That might be fairly straightforward. But St. Albert noted the subtle difference that vessels made of a copper alloy, what we would call bronze or brass, added a stronger flavor to these foods than did plain copper. That is an observation of one who pays careful attention and has repeated an, a, a study several times over. It's for this reason that St. Albert stands as such a fitting patron of the sciences. His canonization is, as with all saints, because of his personal holiness. But his elevation to the patron of sciences has to do with these observations, of which I've given only a suggestion. In uh, leading up to his canonization in 1941, scientists, academicians, philosophers, theologians, concerned humanitarians pleaded with the Holy Father to name for them a special patron for scientific advancement and political decision-making, a patron saint. 
And after careful reflection, the Pope, in consultation with others, chose St. Albert. And what a choice indeed. One who was not only a scientist, but an administrator and diplomat as well. One who had to broker difficult and delicate deals. What better patron for what was requested? For a, a patron of the scientific advancement and the political decision making that goes along with scientific matters. The Pope named him patron saint, quote, with all the supplemental privileges and honors which belong of its nature to this heavenly patronage. Uh, that seems like a big order and a special gift to St. Albert granted by the Holy Father. But keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, that the words of the Holy Father in proclaiming a saint, in proclaiming a patron, fall under the words which Jesus spoke to Peter. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So for the Pope to name a patron, God will act through that to give that patron, the, the working through that to pour upon the earth the graces requested of that saint as patron of whatever the saint is named. And so indeed, when we pray to St. Albert for intercession in the sciences, when we pray to St. Albert for guidance and intercession for political decision-making around scientific matters, God does work through that. And God grants to those who pray the answer to their prayers. St. Albert is known for his patron of the sciences, in part because we already have so many patron saints who are uh, mystics, who are theologians. But St. Albert said, if I had to have somebody read one thing that I'd wrote, I'd rather have them read my theology than read my natural philosophy. St. Albert was a scientist, but he was even more so a mystic. We note in the case of St. Albert a change in his mystical theology. The early Albert, so writes Father Bernard Blankenhorn, is Augustinian Platonic. The early Albert seems to borrow from the, his Augustinian heritage the desire to be liberated from the body, to leave it behind, to see uh, things as they really are, separated from their material conditions. And then St. Albert reads Dionysius, and reads Aristotle, and fuses the two together and builds upon his Augustinian heritage. In the later Albert, we see that God passes on knowledge and experience of divine things in veils, veiled by the liturgy, veiled by the Bible, veiled by the words of creation, uh, by, the, by the mystery of creation. What is this veil? It's not really a hiding in the sense of an obscuring, but it's in the sense of a protection. No one can look upon the face of God and live. And so God grants us ways to find him, ways appropriate to what we are, beings of body and soul. The divine light comes to us through the sensible veils of liturgy and physical creation because all of our knowledge, all of our knowledge, naturally begins with sense experience. We see God first through images, and then we move, by God's grace, beyond the images to see God more clearly in himself, with the hope, the patient confident expectation, that we will see God in heaven. Grace builds on nature. Our intellect is in potency, is, is able but not quite there yet, to grasp spiritual things, but proportionally, according to the kind of beings that we are, through a light superadded to nature, that is to say, the light of grace or the light of glory. But as we move beyond the images, as we leave the, the safe and wonderful and beautiful liturgy, as we uh, move beyond the words of comfort that we read in the Bible, as we move beyond the awe and wonder that we experience when we look at the beauty and marvelousness of the natural world, we begin to tremble because, as I said, no one can look upon the face of God and live. But St. Albert, perhaps not only through his study but also through his own experience, has an answer for us to give us confidence and courage along the way. The answer for Albert is faith. The light of faith strengthens us so that we do not tremble so that we can look upon God and live. 
Faith is intellectual, and it is ecstatic, and it is unitive. Faith is joined with charity, and the undergirding of the whole of Albert's mystical theology is his need of the power of grace, according to need, gift, and desire. We need grace. God can give grace. God wants to give us grace. St. Albert's study invite us to follow in his footsteps, to pay attention to the wonders of nature, to look not only at how beautiful it is, but at how marvelous it is. For those who know about me and trees, I will admit, I did go last night and pull out Gilman's book and look back at Shivo's model from 1988 of the um, CODIT model of, of tree decay based upon the different kinds of molecular and uh, structures that are built up, uh, cellular structures to make up the structure of a tree. Nature is not only beautiful, it's incredibly marvelous as well as we start to look at it detail and as we look at it as a whole. St. Albert knew that, and that's why he kept that seashell on his desk all those years. For whom is St. Albert a patron? For scientists? Absolutely. For mystics, theologians, philosophers, and leaders? Yes, as well. But the man who was so accomplished in all these areas is the same man who could pick up a seashell, who could take it home and leave it on his desk for many years, showing it to others as something wonderful to see. For all these people, St. Albert is a patron. For all who wonder at nature, for all who, wondering at nature, seek the causes and principles, and for all who, seeing the cause and principles, see the one cause who made it all. For those who see in nature the hand of a loving God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, and God has not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess as much as for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us offer our prayers to the Lord. For the church that like saint albert she may continue to be the champion of the use of human natural reason enlightened by faith and love we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for world leaders that they may work towards peace and harmony and never seek to manipulate but to inform the intellect and build up faith in god we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for those who have only received one talent in this life who are tempted to bury their master's money and coast through life without effort, that they may realize their modest gifts are not their own and that God expects them to work with the resources that have been given to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in need of compassionate intercession and loving care, especially for the sick and, the financial, and those who are in financial difficulty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the friends, family, benefactors of St. Albert's Priory, that God might bless them with a keen intellect and a loving and faithful heart. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers. And for all those who have died, who are trustworthy with their talents in life, and for all those that we remember in our book of remembrance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, look on us, your people, with kindness and love. Hear the prayers we raise to you and grant us what we need through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor on these offerings, we pray, O Lord. 
that what we celebrate in the mystery of the passion of your Son, our Lord, we may obtain with loving affection through the intercession of blessed Albert, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in your providence you chose St. Albert as a friend of the eternal wisdom, to search for you, the creator of the universe, in every circumstance of life. He found you to be the supreme good, the most wonderful of all that exists. Just as he reconciled human nature with divine faith in the constant search for truth, so he promoted harmony among all people, seeking peace with all his might. He adored the Holy Eucharist with fervor and honored with filial love the mother of your incarnate Son, filling his life with devotion. And so with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus, Sabaoth, Pleni Suceli, indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Recepti solitaribus moniti et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater nostem, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And for those of you watching at home, please join us in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Saint, Saint Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite my spirit. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Through Christ, the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast of blessed Albert they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, the Lord of all knowledge, who made St. Albert rich in the gift of wisdom as he devoted himself to prayer and study, illumine you with his light and fill you with his blessing. May God, who gave you life through the death of his Son and nourished you with his flesh and blood, be praised by you forever. Amen. May God make you a temple of preaching and a house of prayer and of praise forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to
to you.